Hello, it's Cara Riley, and we're here at the weekly photography show. We are so happy to have you at the Landscape Photography Show, and we've just had a few cyber gremlins, so if you're watching live, we're here. <laughs> it, it always happens, and when you've done some hangout on air, you'll realize that it just happens. And we are going to have so much fun today. Um, this is a show where we share our photographers from Google Plus and some of the wonderful tips that they have. We, this is our fifth show. And uh, so we're, we've got a wonderful guest today, Crystal Craft from Denver, Colorado. She is the unofficial ambassador for Denver, so we'll get to her. <laughs> uh, first, I'll introduce our uh, team members from the Landscape Photography Theme Age. For those of you who share your landscape photography uh, shots, we just love them and they are amazing. So hopefully you will get some tips from today. We'll be bringing in some of the things we've talked about in some of the other shows. We're going to go through some of Crystal's um, incredible shots, talk about how she planned, what she did, and we'll start. So I am Cara Riley and you can find me in the Cosmic Cow Pie. I actually have not been in the Cosmic Cow Pie and you're here. This is my this is my zone. Uh, I've been gone since November uh, in basements, in <laughs> different places. So I am glad to be back. And uh, I help people connect the dots, a small business and real estate consultant. And thanks to Margaret Tompkins, our fearless leader and amateur photographer looking to improve. So let's uh, introduce Margaret here. And she just got back from a wonderful cruise. Tell us a little bit about that because you know all of our landscape photography friends have missed you for a couple weeks. Hi uh, Cara, it's uh, really great to be with you this evening and uh, everyone who's watching. Uh, I have been on vacation for about two weeks so uh, I wasn't even sure how to turn the computer back on. I was kind of starting at ground zero and still trying to wade through uh, several thousand emails that are waiting for me so I do apologize uh, to all those people who have uh, sent messages and uh, posted to the theme that I haven't seen uh, their, their gorgeous shots yet, but uh, uh, I'm working on it, I'll just say that. Um, I'm uh, from Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, just an, an amateur photographer who enjoys uh, uh, traveling places and taking photographs of the things I see, especially beautiful landscapes. I'm just a real sucker for them. Uh, so uh, I enjoy them and uh, I enjoy our photography theme and uh, spend quite a bit of time on Google Plus uh, there at the theme and also uh, moderating the landscape scape photography community uh, which is a different entity but they both focus on landscapes and uh, in my spare time I'm a, a curator for a couple of additional photography themes uh, water bird Wednesday and grass Tuesday uh, which I both enjoy those uh, so much as well so really a pleasure to be with you tonight and uh, I did take a a uh, trip to New Orleans uh, with my family, spent a few days there uh, touring some of the swamps and the mansions uh, that they have to offer and eating really some fabulous food uh, there in New Orleans and then we took a cruise to the Bahamas uh, and it was on a carnival ship and, and it had no <laughs> problems uh, everything yeah, was working well yeah. <laughs> uh, The the, the weather was a little cool, but that's the only uh, complaint that I have. The ship was wonderful and the people were marvelous and uh, I've got to take some wonderful shots I hope to be posting soon. So great to be here, Cara. Uh, uh, glad to be back with you. Well, Margaret, we uh, we wondered if you were going through withdrawals of not being on Google Plus for uh, eight hours a day, like she normally does. You know, I I thought I I would, but actually I didn't. I was so busy with everything uh, that I wasn't. But when I got back home, I realized I had uh, missed everybody on uh, Google Plus. 
and and my two cats. I had missed them as well. So uh, hopefully I can spend a little bit of time with uh, my friends here on Google Plus as well as the two cats. So I'm back <laughs> home and it, it's always good to get back home. Well, thank you, Margaret. Now we're going to go across the pond and we're coming up to, you know what's coming up, St. Patrick's Day, and uh, we've got David uh, Heath Williams from uh, the Dublin, but he's really from Wales. We'll let you explain uh, and, and share with us what happens this St. Patrick's Day in uh, Dublin. <laughs> Well, as you can imagine, and uh, especially over in uh, America as well, but uh, Dublin goes uh, crazy for Patrick's Day. Um, <laughs> so the whole of Dublin goes crazy for Patrick's Day. Uh, plenty of processions, plenty of uh, celebrations, and uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to be. Um, it is. Uh, my local town will celebrate St. Patrick's Day. It'll, it'll, it'll turn green literally for a few days. In fact, our whole seafront has been turned into um, a fun fair amusement park right the way along. Um, so there would be some good night shots there with the lights and the rides and stuff. Um, oh, that's awesome. So, um, I, actually, I actually celebrate St. David's Day for Wales more than I celebrate St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> well, and, uh, with a name like Aunt Riley, I'm going with St. Patrick's. <laughs> Well, St. David's Day was the 1st of March. That was actually my birthday as well. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, that's, that's how you end up with the name David when you live in Wales. And if you're born on St. David's Day, you get named David. But, um, yeah, well, um, but uh, day, I mean, it will be amazing as always. Uh, I'm going to do a little bragging on David. Um, David takes the most incredible sunrise shots all over the sea coast um, in Ireland. And tell our listeners how many hits you have had on that Dublin Bridge. Uh, this is clicks <laughs> on one um, photograph. It's funny, yeah, it's funny you should say that because there's there's another one at the moment taken over, but um. I, I don't know. It's over 35 million hits on that. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, okay, so there's there's a bar for all of our list, all of our listeners. That 35 million hits on one photograph. Well, okay. I started getting notifications the other day on um, uh, a photograph I took in Clothley Falls, in um, over the Wicklow, over the Sally Gap, a place called Manakil Bride. And I started getting photo uh, hits off it the other day, and I, I don't know why. And I said to myself, I'm just going to go and look at the Picasso front page. And there it was. It was the number fifth picture on the Picasso front page. Wonderful. So it's on about four million hits at the moment. So I don't know how you end up on that front page on Picasso, but... No, that is, that's incredible, David. Well, we're, we're so pleased that you could join us today. So now I'm just going to do a little bit more of a, a background on um, Crystal. She mm -hmm. is a photographer. She is a realtor. She is one of the first bloggers, like serious <laughs> bloggers. Um, she is a trainer. She does social media, technology. We're, we're not going to laugh too much, Crystal. <laughs> but we're <laughs> with our cyber gremlins <laughs> and yeah, yeah well you should have seen me when we did our bar camp but it was really it was worse so um but this is what's fun crystal is always seeking the sunset or puffy clouds and she just really has fun with her work and she's going to share um how she's used her work to start communicating so crystal we are so delighted to have you 46 countries in six continents with your bike. Tell us about that first. We, we are all dying to know about that. Oh, well, um, in order to celebrate 2000, um, I joined a bicycling community. There was 250 of us, and we rode our bikes around the world. Um, more accurately, I went around the world with a bike because um, I wanted to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the cyclists, they wanted to put in every mile, and I wanted to see where I was going. So that's essentially when I started blogging, because um, as I was riding, I would take pictures and snapshots and uh, then write about our day just to keep a journal. And then I posted it online. So I, I wrote a um, website or a blog, as it would be called today, um, while we were going around the world. And it took a year. 
Oh wow! Well, that um, is fun. We 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 sailed around the world, and I was ready to come home after uh, three months. So oh. <laughs> I, I have to give you accolades for <laughs> for persevering for a year. Yeah. So I'm going to start here. I'm I'm going to share um, a screenshot here. This is uh, this is Crystal's um, page. Um, if you circle crystal, you are going to see these amazing shots. And this shot, I understand from the comments, crystal, on your, uh, actually on your Facebook page, this is in a contest. And just to be honest, taking a lightning shot is on my Goddard list. I want <laughs> to get some lightning. So tell us a, a little bit about this picture, how you did it, and uh, how other people can do it. Well, you know, it, it, a lot of it has to do with luck. <laughs> that um, I was out with a friend, and he was visiting from um, Arizona, and we went up top of Mount Evans and had a great day, and then had some dinner, and we're coming home, and I get a call from my husband, and he goes, "Don't come home, because we have a horrible hailstorm, and if you come home, you're going to ruin the car." It was that bad. So it was kind of a funny phone call because usually people are saying, when are you going to get home, you know? <laughs> and instead he's saying, don't come home. So I thought, oh, let's just go over to um, the Skyline area because David, my friend, is a photographer too, and we can get a nice Skyline shot. And so by the time we got there, the bad weather wasn't really in the city. Um, the lightning, I think it was more toward the plains than right over the city like it looks. But um, we just set up in time, and it was amazing. Um, I went back and looked at that day of shooting, and this is the 13th image that I took. And I started at um, an F22 in 10 seconds because I wasn't using the lightning timer, and that was way too much. So I just um, ended up coming down to a, a 6.3 at 4 seconds, and that's when I got that. And the only thing I had to do to the shot in the end, because it came out amber, I had not reset my um, white balance. So I took it into Lightroom and corrected the light balance, and boom, it just popped. So um, the competition it's in right now is uh, our club is part of the um, Colorado Council of Camera Clubs, and it's five or six clubs in the Metro Denver region. And um, each club puts forth their favorite images for competition. And so this is part of the year-end judging that they haven't done yet. I think they're going to do it in the next couple of weeks, the, the final judging. So I have my fingers crossed you know, that it'll play somewhere. But well, I love the I, shot. <laughs> I'm going to put you back on here, but I'm, I'll go back to the picture. Describe to, since you're an ambassador for Denver, and um, all things Colorado, okay, we want everybody to know that, and um, I, I just love, you know, knowing uh, Margaret from Kansas City and, and David from Dublin, so tell our, our viewers what they're looking at here. O over here, you've got a tower, which is kind of interesting, and then what you have going on down here. Well, Denver has a pretty remarkable skyline. Uh, we don't have big water, rivers, and things like that. We have some mountains, but this is looking east. What you're looking at in the Blue Tower is a, an amusement park, and that's a tower where crazy people go to the top and drop down <laughs> <laughs> in like a swing chair. And at night, it's fabulous because it changes color. So you can get that tower pink or purple or blue or red. Um, and, and in the four seconds that I got it, I guess it was just blue at that time, because I've got other pictures with it being different colors. I, I have it pink. <laughs> Do you have it? Okay. <laughs> well, and you know, it's kind of cool because if you take enough of them, you can match the sky or coordinate with the sky that you want, <laughs> whatever color. And well, then um, the oh. foreground, which I've gotten rid of in my competition print, um, I was told to make that darker because it's distracting. So I've just kind of taken away the trees and that's I I twenty five. We're right above a freeway right there. And actually over here I thought that was so interesting. Um to the left that is the sign for the Spear Boulevard exit yeah. in Denver. And the only reason I'm um talking about this is because Crystal um as as we integrate social media with our photography, 
I was, I think I posted something on um, Foursquare that went on a Facebook page, and Crystal knew I was looking for a place to take a shot, and what did you do? Tell them what you did. Uh, I, I told you, go here. <laughs> this is where it is. <laughs> She did. So here she is on social media saying, Cara, just go to Diamond Hill if you want that shot. And um, it's like, oh my gosh. So if Ben was here, Ben T, if you're watching this, he has an entire website of the best locations. And David, um, that would be something. Do you have a, a place where people can go and look and find the best places to take their pictures in Ireland? In Dublin? In the Dublin area? Uh, no, I, I I don't get enough time. Uh, I just don't get okay. enough time to put anything together really or, or do anything like that at the, at the moment anyway. Okay, okay. Well, um, so Ben, what he's doing in the Pacific, uh, what he's doing in the Pacific Northwest is he actually has a website of the places to go. And and Crystal, in this particular example, um, was uh, um, sharing where I could get that shot, and it was <laughs> perfect. Uh, my shot wasn't like hers, but it was I'm perfect. So I'm going to add here's that another shot that Crystal just took. Oh, Car, I just wanted to add on that lightning shot that I really like using that long exposure uh, technique because that looks like you've got two or maybe three individual lightning strikes there, and it just really uh, the composition on that is so good. Uh, I could just stare at that all day. Oh, I mean, it's just you. just such a gorgeous shot. And, and I know you you can't uh, uh, you can't make the lightning happen where you particularly <laughs> want it. Uh, but certainly um, using that four seconds to capture it just really did capture it beautifully. Just love that. So Margaret, when you come to the Grand Canyon this summer, that's where I want. I want the lightning striking, uh, you know, <laughs> around the Grand Canyon. So you're gonna have to bring that. Maybe we'll have to bring Crystal with us. Yay, Maybe I'll so. We may have to bring a rainmaker. Uh, we are yeah. a big, big drought in uh, the Kansas City area. So. Oh, we can bring Virgil. We can bring him. <laughs> we can do that. Virgil. Yeah, we need a rainmaker. Okay, so now Crystal, tell us about this shot, and it's not snow. <laughs> no, it's not snow. <laughs> it's really tricky, isn't it? Um, when we first got there, you know, I grew up in New Jersey on the East Coast on the, at the shore, and when I, we first got there, I'm seeing sand, and I'm looking like, where is the ocean? <laughs> it just well, felt so is, out of place. I don't, think, I don't think everybody knows that this is New Mexico white sand, what do yes. they call it, white sand national park. It is White Sands National Monument. Okay. And it's um, on above the oh Chihuahuan Desert, the northern part. It's not very far from Texas and or Mexico itself, but it's a very unique area of about oh I might quote it wrong, but uh, like 250 square miles of white sand, and it's in a basin. So it's um, all the sand has gathered there. It's uh, gypsum. So it's not your normal type sand. It's very solid and very white, beautiful. It's just eerie out there. And this particular shot, um, my husband was sweet enough to take me there. He's not into photography, and sometimes he actually um, cooperates and stops the car. You know, so I can take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and here he let me have three and a half hours. <laughs> Oh, oh my and gosh. We had a blast. He was enjoying it too. I'm joking. He's not quite that bad. But sometimes oh, but they, I feel like it, you know. <laughs> you know, Ben, if you're if you're listening, Ben, because he has a spouse, if you if you are looking for the shot and you're with somebody who's not, it it really is hard. <laughs> <laughs> because they, it, it takes, they don't understand actually why it's taking so long. Um, and, you know, and that's, it's, it's really sad because <clears throat> I feel rushed and so I don't want to inconvenience him. So you pretty much have to go do this with photographers because we are the only people who understand each I, other. I, think <laughs> I had the, the, like, big rushes, you know, in your life you don't get too many big rushes. But the biggest rush I had was at the Antelope Canyon with Don, or with um, 
a Gray Kinney and Mimi mm. Lundy, three photographers just really having a great time. So now here, tell us about this shot. Um, Crystal, it's uh, in an airplane museum. My husband called it the airplane zoo. <laughs> yeah, this is um, this was a, a compromise, an easy compromise, because my husband loves planes. So um, on the way down to White Sands, we stopped at the Pueblo um, Air Museum. And I had seen a picture from another photographer, of this very picture, so I decided I wanted to go take it. So um, I want to thank him for the inspiration. I got there, and um, the, the, air, the museum is just fabulous. They have all kinds of artifacts and planes and everything from the wars. And So this one is where I said, don't forget to take your knee pads. I did not take them in, but... Um, in the future, I will. <laughs> crawling around in those dirty, hard floors is not exactly fun, and, and it's not really easy on your knees. But well, that, I think that, that was one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up because one of our shows, <clears throat> we did a, um, we did uh, like a survival kit, and uh, the knee pads. Now, yeah. when when uh, Crystal said that needed to be added, now Margaret, you tell us about your knee pads. When do you use the knee pads? Well, I use them out in the garden, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, um, then when I go and photograph things, I very often uh, wear them uh, just as a protection. Um, I like uh, rocky areas uh, in the southwest and go climbing around, which means I'm falling, and uh, uh, it just really is uh, helps protect the knees. and. Um, sometimes you just need to get down on the ground or very close to the ground uh, to get the right shot. And uh, it's just uh, so much more comfortable with some padding around your knees so they don't get all scraped. Um, so it's just uh, it's a, it's a protection. It's uh, uh, just as valuable as um, uh, some uh, rain gear uh, yeah. to keep your camera dry. So now, David, <clears throat> tell because some of our listeners haven't been with us for the whole time, but your photographs are really almost down at ground level. Tell us how what you do, and how far down do you get to get those pictures? Um, yeah, if it's a shoreline photograph, most of my photographs are literally about four, about five or six inches off the ground. I, you, know, you would go quite close. It, it all depends what angle you're looking for, but I usually end up doing a belly flop onto the floor and I'm looking through the camera, um, you know, leveling it out, trying to get the right position. And, and But that's it. Funny you should say that about the knee, the knee pads. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was down in Greystones and there's a, a, a rocky position I go to quite a lot. And um, I, I literally did kneel down where I shouldn't have done and I got a, a huge lump on the side of my knee straight away. Uh, and it's, there's nothing worse. You have to have the tools for the job in one way. And, and, and sometimes knee pads are just something you don't think about. And, and, and also um, a blanket, you know, to put down where, where it's really dirty. So, so yeah. Chris Dolly, thank you for the knee pad tip so, <laughs> <laughs> from the airplane zoo. Now, look at this one. Um, this is just looks like a Christmas card. Tell us about this, how, how you took it, what the time was. And no, that's not sand. <laughs> no, that's, this is snow. <laughs> um, oh, in the beginning of January, we went up to Steamboat Springs, which is getting tons of snow. It's a wonderful ski area. So there's, it's just a target-rich environment. Lots of barns. Mm -hmm. Um, ranches, horses, uh, you name it, Steamboat has it, so it's really easy to go spend a few days and come back with tons of photos. We were um, really tired this morning. We got up and um, actually started to leave the condo, and my two friends were leaving without their cameras because they thought we were going to breakfast, and I'm like, no, go get your cameras now. <laughs> I couldn't believe they were doing that, but... Um, they went and got the cameras. We came out, and we just saw this marvelous sunrise. So I started driving and had no idea where we we're going to end up. Um, the area is has a river, the Yampa River, that goes through it, and there was just a lot of moisture, and so 
everything was crystallized and it was just spectacular. I just kept driving and I saw this red schoolhouse and I knew this is it. <laughs> and it's a little historic schoolhouse and uh, pulled over and we got so many wonderful pictures just in this area, not just of the schoolhouse, but of the trees and the sunrise. And uh, yes, it is wonderful. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I totally think that is a Christmas card. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I love that one too. It's uh, that gorgeous red color. It's uh, like if you were looking at that and it was uh, uh, brown or something, you'd want to go grab a paintbrush and paint it red, uh, <laughs> just so you could have it red against that beautiful white snow. So it's it's a gorgeous shot. And I love the little. Um, bell, the school bell up yeah. there. It just made yeah. it perfect. So, so um, Crystal, uh, there uh, is, she posted a really, really funny picture um, when she went, you know, we, we forget about the hazards as a photographer when you're, you know, going places. And Crystal posted a picture of her Escalade in the snow bank because she... <laughs> <laughs> Tell them what you did. That was so funny. I should go find that picture to share. <laughs> well, it was my ultimate plan to get the to meet the entire neighborhood. <laughs> um, we, we were driving down the street, and my friend goes, "Oh, stop! Turn around! Turn around!" She had seen something down the river, so I went to turn around, and this was in steamboat, and they grade the street when they plow the snow. They grade it even, and you can't tell how deep it is. And I made the mistake of my, my wheel went over the road and I thought I could correct it by going quickly and getting back up on the road and instead it just went down. It was like three foot of snow mm -hmm. and there was no way out. And of course I'm right in an area where there's no cell reception. And so um, we got to meet all the ranchers and their tractors and <laughs> people coming going skiing and so forth. It was actually a fun morning. So nobody was hurt. Um, I had AAA. Um, my friend called 911. The police officer came out. You know, <laughs> it was an exciting morning. <laughs> so I said, so, now I have this reputation. You know, I, 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 <laughs> I don't normally run off the road. <laughs> uh, okay, well, um, it was so funny because she posted it on, and um, I thought, oh, she needs to check in fair on Foursquare yeah. in the ditch. Be the first of your friends to check in. There. <laughs> And, and that no. would have been good had I had cell reception. <laughs> well, and even on Google Plus, you can check in places, you know, so that would have been a good one. And Google <laughs> Earth, and everybody would have seen you. <laughs> now, Margaret's going to love this one. This is uh, Bryce Canyon. Tell us about this. You know, I took that years ago, and I just recently took another Lightroom class. And I've been going back and redoing some of my old photos. And that is one that I just pulled out. And that is Bryce Canyon. It's a marvelous place. But, so um, while we're talking about that, Crystal, well, let's share about some of the classes in your photography journey. Because a lot of people will be um, uh, watching this. And we want to share how people grow. You know, from the time they decide, oh, I think I like photography to, wow, I'm going to be obsessed with it, and I go for a two-hour shoot, and I think I'm gone for ten minutes. So <laughs> tell, tell us about the classes that you have gotten the most out of and what you would think helps a photographer grow. Well, I've taken lots of classes, and probably the, the best that I've taken that seems to solve so many photographer needs is Lightroom. Um, we have a, a marvelous instructor here who actually was on the team that developed Lightroom. He worked for Adobe, and so he's right in this area. His name's George Jardine, and so George has come and done workshops for us. I've learned so much from him. And he also has DVDs because I have short memory. So <laughs> I'll go and read, the, you know, when I need to do something, I'll go watch his, his DVD. And then um, just recently, we've had another Lightroom class with a photographer, and it was so enlightening because he sh his pictures are fabulous. And during the class, he gave us two pictures of what they were like raw before he did anything to them. And I looked at the one going, wow, I have crappy pictures just like that. 
<laughs> if, if he can do make miracles with that picture, I, you know, I should go back. So that's why I went and, and started going back into my old files and, and just using Lightroom to enhance them. So good. Uh, okay, so uh, you're saying if you would say what class to take first, it might be Lightroom. Well, and Lightroom is a database. So once you start taking pictures, you want to be able to find them again, and that's been another big problem of mine because I've had Lightroom from the very beginning, but I was clueless how to use it. And so over the years, I kind of developed my own system, which really wasn't very good. <laughs> so now I'm going back and redoing it. But if you initially use Lightroom to um, for your library of photos, you'll you'll be in perfect shape if you know how to use it first. And then um, also Lightroom will let you do the the um, modifications of the um, what am I trying to say in the develop module you can um, change the exposure and add highlights and, and all kinds of good things so there's just so much that it can do that I haven't even touched all of the tools in it that, that's great I, no, I'm no. one of those that really love Lightroom as well and uh, uh, I had, I think the original version or Lightroom 1.2, something like that, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, found it kind of complicated uh -huh. uh, and uh, couldn't quite uh, figure it out. But then um, uh, recently uh, looked at it again and uh, uh, really uh, bought it to help with the um, uh, cataloging of all those photographs it's like when you've got you know upwards uh, 20,000 plus um, you've got to have something to kind of keep them organized so you can find uh, find that old photo of Bryce Canyon when you want to get a hold of it <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, but I was uh, totally blown away uh, at the uh, creative ability that is within Lightroom um, to do certain things, uh, I, I just it was it was wonderful. Uh, couldn't believe that there was so much power there in that product, as well as it being perfect for um, cataloging. And this is from somebody who uses um, Photoshop a lot. Uh, so I, I I'm now using them both, and uh, very very glad that I do. And I think you bring up a great point, Crystal, about going back um, and looking at your photographs as, as you gain more experience and learn these techniques and quite frankly as the software processing uh, gets better uh, and we learn mm -hmm. more about it um, your capacity to deal with uh, photographs is is much better now than it was probably when you took that original photograph mm -hmm. of Bryce mm -hmm. so it's really a good reason to not ever throw a photograph away that you may be able to uh, come back and and um, uh, produce a marvelous print from something where maybe the light balance was was not perfect and uh, you had uh, just dismissed it because at the time you didn't know how to do that so it's just wonderful now that the post-processing software is improving and our knowledge of these products is improving so it's just a a win for everybody and just really I enjoy uh, looking at some of the old ones and what I've been able to do with them uh, I, I'm just surprised at how good they turn out <laughs> so <clears throat> thank you Margaret now David this is a surprise <clears throat> this is what we call shooting from the hip here as we're having our little discussion on the view um, this is David one of David's posts now tell us what you did, where you were for this shot, and I, you posted this this morning or yesterday? Um, well, this, this was, to me, this was Tuesday morning. Okay, and so um, tell us how, what you did to to edit it, what you and where you were to shoot it. Okay, this is, the location is Greystones, County Wicklow. Uh, this is called the Middle Beach. So even though it doesn't look like there's a beach there, there is a beach. It's 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 on your left hand side, just like about 30 feet, 40 feet around the corner from it, like literally on your left hand side. Um, uh, right. Well, I left work at ten past seven, 
Um, I drove down to Greystones, which was just five minutes away. Uh, it's very cold. It was minus three or four degrees. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, I don't know what that is. That's 23 degrees in your language. Um, uh, I set the tripod up and the camera. I will see the, the rain, and, not the rain, the, the snow and the wind from the previous day was very bad. And uh, the seas were very high, so you couldn't get down there. But because the wind had dropped, they said, I'll just pop to Greystones and see if I can get a picture. Um, so I plonked my tripod down. I took about 20 pictures, uh, bracketed, one stop either way. Um, so this is actually a blend of two pictures. It's the same, actual same photograph, but from a bracket of minus one stop and uh, the zero stop as well so the sky will be is one stop lower than what it really was um, it's just the, the sky and the, the foreground blended together from the same two images uh, then in Photoshop CF6 uh, then I brought it into Nixsoft Color Effects Pro 4 I used uh, the detail enhancer to bring out the foreground um, the pro contrast to bring out the color uh, and the, the 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 dynamic range a bit more. Then I used um, the color balance, uh, the the brilliance and warm filter to bring out the redness in the in the sunset and the sunrise. And then I used the polarizing filter on top of it in the software to bring the blue out in the, in the very top of the sky, just the very top. So I'm um, using them. Um, a default setting uh, and uh, process it from there, flatten the layers, um, square it off slightly because it was just slightly askew and then post it on Google Plus about an hour later. <laughs> well, David, while we, um, well, while I'm going to go to Crystal here and, and talk a little bit about the club that she's in, but if uh, in this you can say no, but if you can find the the first shot that you took before you did the editing and putting them together, that would be a really cool learning tool for me anyway. To see this is what it looked like before, and he took all those steps, put it, combining the two and that's what your finished product looked like. So if you can find it while Crystal's sharing, that would be awesome. <laughs> I, I can find it right now. Okay, uh, good. On. All right, so we're going to ask Crystal here. We're, we're multitasking. <laughs> we're getting so much better now with, uh, with uh, um, uh, what we're doing on our Hangouts. <laughs> it's just practice, right? It's kind of like taking the, taking the shots. It's like... When you've been with somebody, like when I have actually done shoots, um, Pam Chockley from Vegas, who now lives in California, does leading lines. I went, met her in Vegas, and um, <clears throat> she like it was one shot. Whatever it was we were taking, it was one shot. And, they were all good. and uh, same with Gray Kinney. So Gray, if you're listening, so uh, Crystal, share a little bit with us uh, about. Um, your evolution as a photographer, how you got started, what really motivated you to take your photography to the next level, and how you how it helps you in your business. Well, I got started probably when I was blogging because I discovered early on that um, a picture will attract people to read where words, a wall of words is not that interesting. And I was buying stock photography all the time because I couldn't post anything unless I had some kind of a picture. And then I decided, you know, I could probably go take some of these. And that's what I started doing. I would go take images and put them on my blog posts. And at the time, I thought they were awesome. You know, people were telling me how great it was. And now when I look back, I'm going, oh, my gosh, what was I thinking? <laughs> I <laughs> think know. we're all that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, from that, um, I heard about a photography club. And so I went to it. My sister-in-law actually took me off to the wildlife. Uh, photography club, which was nice, but I couldn't see myself waiting for animals <laughs> to come so I could take a picture, you know, I, so I w I'd be taking pictures, you know, probably scaring them away. And so I actually went through several clubs until finally I just ended up in, in my own city of Lone Tree, 
and I stayed with that club and they needed a needed help with being a secretary a couple of years ago so I started as the secretary for the club and then um, the website really needed work and I had experience doing that so I revamped the website and you know from there I ended up being president um, probably because nobody else wanted it but <laughs> I've got a really great group so we um, in the meantime, have partnered with a meetup group. We're not partnered, but sponsored one of the largest meetup groups in Denver. There's when we took it on, there was about 600 members, and the, the gal who'd been running it for a long time was kind of burned out. She was going to give it up, so she asked, "Do you guys want it?" And I'm like, "Okay, we'll do this." So we kind of blended our club and the meetup, and started inviting people from the meetup to our club. And we've doubled our membership and we have lots of activities going on and some of the best parts we have um, professional photographers who teach approaching us saying hey I'd like to do a workshop for you and so we can fill those up for them which makes me feel really good because it's you know it just seems like a win-win you know we put some professionals to work for a day and and we teach people who want to learn so we've become kind of a yeah. clearinghouse for um, learning so that's about it. Um, our club is actually um, doing much better in competitions. That's another thing. Um, out of six clubs, I think we were number five a couple years ago. Right now we're ranked number two. So that's good progress for us. Well, that's thank you, Krista, for sharing that. I think you know if people are listening, um, that is an, another step to find a photography club to yeah. really grow with people. Well, now, Margaret, have you ever been in a photography club? Uh, yes, we have one here locally. Um, I don't think it's as active as the one that Crystal uh, just uh, described. Members. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but it's. Um, uh, I need to go tell them what uh, Crystal has said and um, uh, maybe give them your website so they can go check it out. Uh, but I certainly, um, especially early on, I think grew a lot because of that uh, local club and uh, things like the, uh, I believe it was last June, uh, Google did a worldwide photo walk mm -hmm. thing and um, we met in um, the Crown Center area of Kansas City. A number of us uh, who I didn't know, uh, well I think I knew one person there at the time and uh, they're now my good buddies here on Google Plus and I you know see their stuff all the time so it uh, uh, that was certainly a, a wonderful side benefit uh, was being able to meet some of these other enthusiasts that kind of share this same passion that I have uh, but I really tried to pay attention to um, what others were doing uh, and learned a lot uh, and wasn't hesitant about asking people how they did a particular shot uh, something I admired it's like okay I want to go do that uh, please tell me how you did that so I can go do the <laughs> same thing and they're incredibly kind about sharing that with you so it's uh, uh, certainly given me a lot of incentive uh, to go out and do things like that myself well, that's great. I think oh. just the encouragement, the kindness, I mean, that was what um, got me to working in the landscape photography theme was just the kindness of Margaret with the comments. So as you're meeting people, hopefully you'll, you know, realize that just a few nice words about their photography might help them go to the next level. So David, we're ready for you to share your screen oh. now. Um, hold on, I'm, I'm, that one from this morning, uh, I'm a very organized sort of person when it comes down to uh, location of files and I... Well, well, just show us that before of any and then you know what, we'll look at that drive. It's on a different drive because... Um, uh, well, just just show us any um, of your I'm, before I'm just doing it now. Hold on a second, uh, they're just... Um, uh, I've I found the thing I found the picture in my stream from about a few weeks ago, and I've just um, put in the, uh, the before before and after view up now. So just give me two seconds there now. 
Should be up any second now. Well, that's great. We'll, we'll let you do it, and we'll just talk here for a minute. Um, uh, be, you find what you want. When you get it, then we'll stop. But right, we're, we're getting... You found it? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Oh, why is my screen share not working? <laughs> it's those cyber gremlins. <laughs> can, can I say something real quick? Sure, go right ahead. Uh, one of the things that um, is really important with photography is having people to go shoot with. And yeah. today with Facebook and you know all the social media things, one of the things that we did was um, started a group called the Pixel Chicks. Basically it was a bunch <laughs> of girls initially starting in our area and it's now grown, it's all over the country. But um, we would just post on Facebook and then get together and go shoot places. So it's always nice to have a buddy when you have to get up and, yeah. and dark you know, and go in the city and shoot and so forth. So I would recommend that you look for photography groups. Well, of course, we're on Google Plus right now. I don't know, are there any social groups like that on Google Plus? Uh, there's communities that are growing. Um, and I know I just have done my own thing when I see somebody saying they're going to do something. That's how I met up with uh, Greg Kenny is he was doing a one-man show a uh, Southwest tour to um, it put it landscaping in his uh, portfolio and, um, and I also met Jim Goldseth uh, through the landscape photography theme now <laughs> it's kind of different you know when it's just one person and here's a guy yeah. so I, my husband comes and we, we meet at a restaurant and yeah. then he comes to and then we decide oh yeah this this person's okay you, you do have to be kind of careful about that <laughs> so uh, well, but it's good now it looks like uh, David's got it up here so David is this a before um, this is the before okay um, of the one that we were just looking this at is or white Right, this is the before version anyway. This is before any enhancement from the software. Um, and this is a bracketed shot, so it's uh, about one stop under. I think, yeah, one one stop under. And it was half a second at F22. Now, I, I don't use um, any graduated or neutral density filters. Um, uh, I, just, I just don't use them. I just, I just, it's not that I don't like them, I just don't use them. And uh, so... This is the before shot, and uh, this shows the, the sea lapping in and out, um, just as it was, and then this is the after shot. Now, the, the foreground is um, oh, wow. just like, actually, you know, I put the wrong picture up. But this is, the, this is the enhancement from the what the Nick Soft would give for bringing out the colour and uh, enhancing the detail in the, in the sky area. But uh, that's just an example of what software does. It's, it, it's like what Margaret said, what Crystal said as well. You, for me, um, I come from a, the days of black and white. So having an enlarger at home and developing pictures was important. So learning how to develop, enhance, dodge, uh, burn a picture mm. uh, was very important. And so even though you might have a good camera, and you might have an excellent location, and you've taken the best picture you can. At the end of the day, you've still got to develop the picture. And in 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 many ways, people just send their pictures off and, and get them, you know, taken. But the more serious you get, the the more you need to know. So, having any course on Lightroom or Photoshop is uh, is a must. I think uh, that I a book. Thank and, you, uh, went on for, course. For Thank you for finding those because I think, you know, as we talked about the finishing, it's the post. Is that the correct terminology? The post is what post happens after we take the shot. <laughs> so. Yeah, post processing. I mean, it, yeah. it's all about four fifths, I mean, they say in retail, uh, four fifths of the seller's presentation. So it's, it's how it looks at the very end. You, you, you can go to a scene and you can take, you know, either a rubbish, I mean, as Crystal's pointed out, and I've spoken to Margaret about this before, that I have um, three terabytes of photographs, and I hate throwing out any image or hate deleting oh any gosh. image because you're there, you're saying to yourself, oh, I might go back and revisit this one day. But 
one of the problems you get at the end is you can't keep everything forever. And um, so I, I have deleted over a terabyte of information over recent weeks. But I've still kept on to things which I know I'm going to go back and re rework and rework and rework. And um, it, it is at the end, it's, it's, you can take a wonderful picture or whichever way you look at it, you can take a rubbish picture. But if you have certain software to bring certain details out, to bring certain colors back, to bring you know, white balance back to where it should have been, and then, yeah. um, and then the, when you've cropped it to a, I mean, the, the amount of photographs that you can crop into a different direction uh, make a massive difference. I took yeah. a photograph this morning. I didn't post it on um, publicly on Google Plus. I posted it on uh, the the the, uh, the Irish community, uh, run by um, a good group of people here in the, in the Dublin area and all over the country. And it's a po photograph looking across to Wales, a hundred miles across the sea, and you can see Wales one hundred miles away. Uh, and well, it was only the software us... enhancement that actually brought it out. You're going to make us want to join the Irish community here to go see that <laughs> shot, or it, we'll see it on your stream. Now we're coming to the time of our show where we each share one photographer um, that we uh, would we highly respect and think that people should um, circle. So, Margaret, we'll start with your share tonight. And, okay. And Crystal, you be thinking about who you want to share. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see if I can do this. Well, how about this? While while Margaret's uh, searching, I'm going to put this up. And um, my suggested uh, photographer is Crystal Craft, our guest. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just happen to have her buffalo shot. And to me, this looks like the front of a book or a, uh, <laughs> a, a calendar, you know, a Wild West calendar. And I think it's really interesting because Crystal was telling me this story. And I know uh, in the green room, Margaret asked, how far away were you, Crystal? But you were holding bob wire up <laughs> to get the shot through the bob wire. So you can post this on. I almost died. Is it Tuesday or Thursday? <laughs> you know, the bob wire, wire snap. But how far away were you, Margaret or uh, Crystal? You know, I think it's probably about 50 feet away, and there's a pretty big fence that. I slipped my tripod through on the bottom, and then I heist it up as far as I can so I could still see through it, and then separate the the two barbed wires to get the shot. And <laughs> he just looked so wonderful at me. I was so happy because usually they totally ignore you or show I, you your like, posture. It looks like a painting. It looks like a painting. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. Okay, now Margaret, are you ready? Yes, I think I've got it here. Okay, all right, Margaret's turn. Uh, this is a photograph by Ray Billcliff, um, one of the uh, founding fathers, I think, of photography on uh, Google+. Um, everyone really should be following him. Uh, he's out of uh, South Florida, uh, and he's been the scuba diver and, and this really outdoor person and does such gorgeous work. And uh, he runs uh, about uh, eight or ten uh, different themes including Grass Tuesday and Waterbird Wednesday and I think Swamp Saturday. Um, he's got one for every day of the week and you know maybe several on Thursday so uh, he's uh, very busy but this is one of his photographs. Um, he's typically he has very brilliant vivid colors, uh, wonderful light that he's able to capture um, and he does uh, just such marvelous work. Here's one of the water lilies. Are you seeing that okay? No, we're, we're oh, now we are. We are now. Okay, and he does this uh, painting, uh, which I've never been able to do, but uh, he just does it brilliantly. So he'll start with a photograph and, and then does this marvelous painting of it. And here's one of... Uh, 
uh, one of his beautiful water birds with beautiful reflections. Uh, but he will have um, oh, alligators and turtles and, and all sorts of uh, wonderful wildlife that he finds there in the Everglades and he just brings it to life beautifully well. So this is my recommendation for uh, a photographer to follow and that's Ray Billcliffe. Well, thank you, uh, Margaret. And Crystal, don't worry, we forgot to tell you about sharing a picture, so you can just say anything. Well, I, I have someone, but I honestly don't know how to share my screen, and I'm afraid to touch it. <laughs> okay, no problem. All right. Well, now, I'm David, I'm on your screen, and we see a beautiful valley with a, a curvy road. And who is your, who is your photographer? Uh, this guy's uh, Aidan Kalu. Uh, I think he's very good. I think he's excellent. Uh, wonderfully talented photographer, and he's always got beautiful light and color. And, um, images are images are stunning for me. Uh, he he contributes to landscape theme regularly, and um, I'd recommend Aidan anytime. Uh, how do you spell Aidan's name? Um, how do you spell Aidan's name, David? Uh, uh, a I D A N. Okay. And then the K A double L double O. Okay. He's, uh, Great. He does. He has some immaculate work. Wonderful. Now, Crystal. Oh, I think I know. I'm... Mm -hmm. How about this? Can you can oh, see great. it? Oh yeah, it I did it. Yay. Yay. <laughs> um, this is a gentleman in our club who I think does remarkable work. His name's Mike Berenson, and he shoots the night sky with a sense of place. So it's not just the scar stars, but you'll see something in the foreground. And he's just amazing. Um, the amount of work that goes into him researching this um, his procedure, <laughs> like where is the Milky Way going to be, and is it going to be a moonless night or whatever? Oops, did I just make it go away? Yeah, well, you, I'll go you back. Went to, I'll go you back. Went to white. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, well, but this anyway, video will be kind of bad. Yeah. yeah. You know, kind of but I, it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I would. Oh, here's here's. I don't know if you can see all these, but go ahead and circle okay. Mike Berenson. Okay, we'll we'll do that. So thank you, everyone. Um, this was kind of a fun. We're loosening up a little bit. We're uh, having a little more dialogue. So um, I, I learn something on every show. So I am so grateful that, that you had this idea, Margaret, to uh, ha have us be able to share with one another. Um, and so our next guest will be um, uh, David Marks. And we had him do uh, a show on um, Google Earth. And oh, I can tell you, I actually implemented the Google Earth techniques that he shared with us Excellent. when we went to Joshua Tree National Park. <laughs> I was finding the trees that I wanted to be behind, and I knew what time the sun <laughs> was going to come, and I would get the shot. Great. So it was really great. And then um, Jim had shared with us uh, about the photographers that starts with the E. How do you say em that? Em is it Emirates? Yeah. Well, Ephemeris. Anyway. Ephemeris. Yes. Ephemeris. Em yes. Ephemeris. Anyway, so mixing the two, but here's the bottom line. I did a practice run to make sure that I knew where I was going in the dark at 3.45. So, anyway, so we're having David Marks back, and uh, if you missed that, it was episode number four, and it was well worth a watch. And he will be with us um, two weeks from today. We have, uh, every other week, we have the show, and he will be teaching or talking to us about thinking in black and white. So landscape photography and thinking in black and white. We have another guest in, in the second after that. Um, and Crystal, tell us Terry's last name. The Bishops. Yes, and she has agreed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she has agreed to be here. And this is one of the things that we had uh, comments from that people wanted to know: How do they start making money from their photographs? And Terry is going to share with us 
what sites give a stock photo and how does it all work and she she puts things on Getty and that's one of the places where all the biggies go to get get their um, uh, photography so that's going to be fun and then on May 7th we're going to have Mark Johnson who Crystal knows and is part of the Rocky Mountain School of Photography and he is going to share with us how to use uh, Photoshop with landscape photography and kind of the evolution of the thinking in your shots, which is really, really going to be kind of fun to uh, see how how what you see and what you're feeling uh, relates to the shot that you take. So um, we've got some great things planned. So yeah. continue to watch the landscape photography show, and we will see you on the 26th and at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And thank you, David, for being up in the middle of the night, Crystal, oh, for coming from Colorado, and Margaret in Kansas. Oh, yeah. So everybody have a great week, and we'll see you on the 26th. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.